Hello, I'm back for my first update. So, um, oh man, let's see. So I've been uh, continuing continuing to listen to lots of Japanese, watch uh, Japanese TV shows and anime, um, but not doing any intentional studying other than kanji yet. As I mentioned last time, last time I'm doing like 10 kanji a day, so slower than a lot of people <laughs> that I hear kind of approaching things with this general approach uh, do it, but uh, I'm now over halfway through uh, RTK1. And uh, one of the things I found really interesting, ah, that's another word. One of the things that I found was that just seeing kind of like numbers progressing in like Anki or things like that wasn't actually very motivating to me or it didn't, uh, it didn't really feel like it was progressing. Just seeing those numbers. Uh, I guess I'm more of maybe a visual person, so what I've done, what I started doing not too long after the last video, my introduction video, was I created a desktop background that just had all of the RTK kanji just like, you know, in a row, and I highlight the ones that I have learned so far. And so every day, just kind of as part of my ritual, like as I, you know, I'll, I'll learn my 10 kanji for the day, and then highlight them in my desktop background and update the background. And so like every day I see like more and more getting highlighted. And that actually was really, really cool when I made that halfway point, because you can see that it's halfway and then past that halfway point, it's like, oh, wow, like I have learned this much so far and I actually have less to go. And just visually that somehow made it feel like I was like over the hump somehow. Uh, so now my, like it felt a lot more like a grind up to the halfway point, and now just, I think this is probably specific to me, I don't know if this would work for anyone else, but for me at least, kind of seeing that I'm like visually that way, over halfway done, has actually made the rest of it feel somehow easier. Um, so uh, my retention rate it seems to be really good, it's uh, over 90% um, for major cards, so I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Um, one of the things that I've found as far as creating stories is that putting more effort into creating the stories doesn't actually seem to get me a lot of benefit or leaks kind of bang for my buck. Um, which is a little counter to what a lot of people have talked about where it's like, oh, you want to like really spend a lot of time on the stories, make them really, really good. Um, but I found that whatever first pops into my head is usually the thing that will continue to pop into my head uh, when I see that keyword again. Um, so just kind of like letting my brain just kind of create something and I'll basically just kind of like tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more specific, kind of fit it in with the, the rest of things. But usually, I mean, I'd say for probably nine out of 10 kanji, uh, maybe more like maybe more like eight out of 10, um, it takes me maybe 30 seconds to a minute to come up with a story. Um, and those have actually worked really well. Now there are some kanji where nothing pops into my head to begin with. And in those cases, then I do spend time trying to like really craft a story. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, for me, it's more that there is a story and that it's something that kind of naturally comes to mind that seems to uh, make the biggest difference rather than really honing in on something. Um, and I also am not writing down my stories, which maybe seems a little bit weird because a lot of people write their stories down. I specifically don't. Uh, and I think for me, at least this works really well because that allows the story to kind of naturally evolve over time. So the next time that I see it, um, I'll remember the story, right? But I might actually tweak it a little bit. And then kind of the next time I see it, you know, that tweak story will be there and I'll maybe tweak it a little bit more. And I'll, it's easier for me to kind of re refine the story to something uh, that is succinct and effective um, just through repeated exposures as opposed to spending a lot of time up front. So I guess maybe that's that's why not spending a lot of time up front has been working for me because uh, I allow the story to evolve into something that is much better over time. Uh, anyway, but so that's the approach I've been taking to RTK. Uh, I mean, it still feels like a bit of a grind, but weirdly not as much as it did before, just because I'm over that that hump, so to speak. Uh, and yeah, so I've been in, uh, enjoying that. And some of the stories are really funny. Some of them are also really depressing. I don't know. The, the stories that have the most emotional hook are the ones that I tend to remember the best. Um, but uh, let's see, what are, what are some other things 
I guess I'm just thinking in terms of advice that I can give people for RTK. I haven't made it all the way through yet, obviously, but I've made it through enough that I think I have some ideas of what is effective and not. Um, so one of the things that I've been doing is coming up with my own meanings for the, um, so not for the, the primary kanji, not the, the main meanings. I'll try and stick with those for the most part but more the, the primitive meanings, like once that piece is used in something else, right, in that context, I'll come up with my own stories, or not stories, uh, meanings, and I found that that is uh, really effective, because um, there's been times where the ones that are in RTK seem too abstract to me to create stories out of, um, or to at least create, like, effective stories for me, so the more that I can take something and make it really concrete, the better, so a good example of this is, um, I don't even remember what the uh, original meaning, or what the original primitive meaning was, but uh, there's, it was something along the lines of like servant or something like that, um, and I changed it to bellboy, because that is a much more, for me at least, like very like concrete uh, meaning, right? And that's only for when it's used as a primitive, not for the, the main kanji. Uh, but that's been really, really effective in remembering it, because it's a much more distinct, much more concrete, uh, kind of vivid image, because when I think of Bellboy, it's like, oh, yes, like, that's, you know, you, the guy with the hat, right? You know, the, 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 it's all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's been effective. Uh, also, coming up for, coming, coming up with different meanings depending on the position of the primitive in the larger kanji. Um, and I am kind of kicking myself. I mean, I shouldn't because it, you know, you learn this stuff over time, right? So that's why I'm sharing it now. So hopefully other people can get something out of it. But uh, I wish that I'd done that more with the earlier uh, primitives is making sure that different positions actually have different meanings. Uh, so for example, with tree, uh, it, I think it would have been helpful for me. I mean, it's, it still ended up being fine, but I think it would have made it even easier for me if like, you know, when it's on kind of the left of the kanji, right, uh, it's tree, and when it's underneath, when it's at the bottom of the kanji underneath things, it's wood, or, you know, things like that. So that then the stories themselves actually tell you what the positions of the kanji are as well. Um, and I've started doing that with the, the new ones, right, the new primitives I'm learning. Uh, but yeah, the more you can do that, the better because then you remember where things are and there's definitely kanji that you know i still kind of mess up as far as uh just where the primitive elements are placed even if i remember what the primitive elements are so yeah uh so then so that's pretty much it for rtk um i'm confident i'm gonna finish i'm just not even worried at this point it's just yeah just keep on going 10 a day doing doing my reviews and yeah I'll, I should be finished end of either like late October or like early November or something like that. So, uh, aside from RTK, I've continued doing listening, um, and that's been really fun. I've continued to just enjoy it. Uh, I remember in the last video, I was like, well, maybe you know, <laughs> as I keep going, maybe it'll stop being fun, but it hasn't. It's continued to be fun. Um, the biggest challenge that I had so far was that I was called for jury duty. Um, and it ended up being a month-long case where we're going in almost every day, um, and it's basically a full-time job being a jury. And I actually did, yeah, I did get put on the case. And yeah, you cannot be listening to things with headphones when you're in court. Like, the, the court will not let you. It's just not going to happen. Um, and even aside from that, uh, I mean, I don't want to come across as an asshole. Also, I think it's important, right? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but paying attention in a court case when you are a jury member is way more important than learning Japanese. Like, that people's livelihood, right? Like, they're, the consequences in people's lives will actually happen from this. So, uh, yeah, be a good jury member, um, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, this isn't like, you know, being in school where the only person you might be screwing over is yourself, right? Like, this is, this is affecting other people. So, uh, anyway, but, uh, so, yeah, so that put a little bit of a kind of 
threw a little bit of a wrench in things. Um, I was still listening to it uh, during lunch break and kind of on my commutes back and forth, uh, and then still watching uh, anime and Japanese TV uh, in the evenings, right? But uh, yeah, that was a little bit uh, interesting. But it was a cool case, so. Um, as far as effects of that, it actually has been really cool, like this kind of slow... Pr so I haven't, again, I haven't been doing any intentional studying. So I haven't been studying grammar. Um, I do look up words sometimes, but it's when I recognize them as words, right? So I'll hear it and suddenly, or I'll be listening and suddenly I recognize that something is a word, even though I don't <laughs> know what it means, but my brain has figured out, like, well, this is a word, and so then I'll look it up. Um, and that's actually a really cool experience because it sticks. Like, it just, it sticks so much better. Like, I remember doing flashcards trying to remember vocabulary, and it doesn't work, right? Like, or at least not in the, the actual language learning sense. Um, I guess maybe lang learning about languages is like, oh, I'm learning about how people say things, but you're not actually learning it and kind of like the ability to immediately understand and uh, produce kind of way. So, yeah, recognizing that something is a word first, like letting your brain get to that point and then looking up the meaning, it just sticks. It's like, oh, well, now I know what this means. Uh, so that's been a really neat experience, just kind of like these words just kind of slowly emerging from the fog and then you look them up and it's like, oh, I'm just like gaining vocabulary. Um, but it is a really slow process. And so this is one of the things, I think like the sentence mining, um, basically is from my perspective at this point and you know my my views on this may change as i actually get to that uh, stage of the process but i think that's basically a way of accelerating that process right because it is happening even just listening to, without doing any flashcards or intentional study like i am slowly understanding more and more but it's really really slow um like I think over the last like couple of months I've gone from understanding maybe like 1% of what I hear to understanding maybe like 2 or 3% of what I hear, something like that. Um, which is still really cool, but it's a really slow process. So, uh, yeah. So aside from kind of words emerging, there also have been times where I just suddenly understand stuff, which is a really weird experience. Um, like I didn't intentionally study anything um, and there will just be these moments where like suddenly I understand things. Now having said that, uh, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time that it happens, it has been things that I had studied previously over the kind of the last couple of years of trying to learn Japanese. Um, but now like my brain is processing it and it's actually getting into the part of my brain that just understands things without effort. And so uh, a good example of this, there's a show that I was, call, uh, that I was watching, um, Alice and Zoroku, and there's this moment in one, one of the episodes where uh, the kind of the, the main kind of little girl female character uh, says, oh, what was it? It was, uh, ni naritai. So like, I want to become human, right? And like, I heard that so many times. I'd been listening to this episode on my headphones, like, probably, like, seven or eight times, and I just didn't even hear it before. I just couldn't even parse out the individual words, and it went straight from that to, I understand what she's saying. And, like, it's also, like, a really powerful moment in the show, at least for, for me it was. So it was also kind of like I'm walking down the street, just kind of listening to my headphones, and suddenly, like, I'm having this emotional reaction. Uh, beca uh, partly because it was, like, really cool that I understood it, but also because it was, like, a really big moment in the show. And, and I suddenly understood it. Um, so... Yeah, that was really neat. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that this approach to language learning works. I'm looking forward to getting through RTK and beginning uh, sentence mining. Um, kind of my expectation of how the sentence mining functions. So this is getting more into kind of just like, I'm, I'm already theorizing about like, why does this work? How could it work? Um, but yeah, I'm still very much convinced that like the way you actually learn languages is by getting input, right? Just lots and lots of input. And you can accelerate that process with other things. So I think the way that the flashcards work, and yeah, I'm looking forward to updating uh, on this once I actually have experience with it. Uh, so I'm not only just kind of like armchair theorizing. So take this all with a huge grain of salt. 
Um, but my current theory about like why that works or how it works based on my experience so far is that the flashcards can basically act as a sort of way to get a dictionary into your head. Um, and a dictionary not just of words, but also of like how the language functions. Um, so I mean, you could call it grammar or whatever, but like you get you get kind of like this dictionary in your head, but it's not actually the same part of your brain that understands languages, right? That's more like the intellectual part of your brain as opposed to like the just natural language understanding part of your brain. Uh, and having that dictionary in your head is basically a much faster way of uh, looking things up than if you were using like an actual dictionary or grammar uh, book. So you'll be watching a show, right? And you'll hear something that you recognize that you know kind of on an intellectual level what the meaning is, but it takes you time to recall it and then kind of like figure that out in your head. Uh, but if you hadn't been doing the flashcards, then you'd have to like stop the video, uh, go look up a bunch of stuff, and it would have taken you like, you know, 30 seconds to a minute instead of like one or two seconds, right? And so it's basically taking that time to kind of look, look things up in a dictionary, it's just reducing that time. And so that makes it a lot more effective uh, for you to kind of quickly learn the language. Uh, so that's kind of my, my theory as to why that's useful. Um, and I guess I'll... Uh, find out if that seems consistent with my experience when I actually start doing it. So yeah, so that's my uh, first update. I'm still really enjoying things um, and I seem to be making progress, albeit very slowly at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, so see you again in a couple of months.